Smartphone manufacturers are now renewing their focus on the budget and mid-range market as high-priced devices receive lower sales figures overall, and the OnePlus Nord is a statement of this trend. The catchphrase for this phone is pretty much everything you could ask for, and from my time with the device, it looks like OnePlus is trying to offer a flagship experience at a bargain price by reducing all the qualities an average consumer doesn't tend to notice. The phone largely succeeds in this respect, and for this, I recommend it to a general consumer. I'm the Bowtie Guy, and here I'll be giving my review of the OnePlus Nord. I'll start the review with the outside of the device. The Nord is by no means a small phone, but if I had to describe the ergonomics, I'd say it's quite easy in the hand. Much of this is thanks to the plastic body, which makes the device a bit lightweight for its size. This, in combination with curved edges on the back, allows it to fit comfortably in the hand. Unlike many other devices today, the glass back here is smooth and untextured, and seems to have an oleophobic coating. Unfortunately, there's no wireless charging underneath, so the glass is just for feel and design. A quirk of the plastic frame is that there's no need for antenna lines of any sort, but there is still the usual array of microphones, speaker grill, and dual SIM tray, as well as the metal power switch, a volume rocker, and notification slider. OnePlus is still one of the very few brands to implement such a slider, and their three-way design is perfection. Seriously, the hardware notification slider should be a feature on every smartphone. The rest of the buttons feel great, and it all matches with the color of the frame, but if you're like me, you'll cover this with a case anyways. Speaking of cases, there's a silicon case in the box with a flap to protect the charge port, so you don't need to worry about spending extra money on protection. A soft screen protector is also pre-applied, which I kept on throughout the review. Where the OnePlus Nord is really able to flex is with its display. The big, variable 90Hz AMOLED is a natural beauty and wouldn't be out of place on a phone twice the price. The pixel density of 408 pixels per inch is adequate, and I'm quite fond of the tall 20 by 9 aspect ratio, which is just a bit taller than most other devices and also helps the phone feel good in the hand. It's bright enough that I'm able to use it without issue in natural sunlight, but is still noticeably dimmer than the surroundings on a sunny day. To my eyes, the colors look accurate and don't seem to shift when viewed at a reasonable angle. Strangely enough, the biggest downside I found with the display was that it couldn't get as dark as I'd like. Lowering the brightness to zero and applying night mode as far as possible, a white social media feed still isn't as dim as what other devices are able to offer. I also wish the selfie camera cutout didn't cause the notification bar to stick so far down, but that's my final nitpick. The display is still quite good and the pros far outweigh the cons. In my opinion, the Achilles heel of the device has to be its speaker system. The mono downfiring speaker is okay when not obstructed by hands or similar objects. Not impressive, but not terrible. The worst part about it is that unlike the dual speaker setups of other phones, audio is significantly impacted by the way you hold the device, and it can be effectively blocked by placing a thumb lightly over the grill. Lastly, the optical and display fingerprint sensor is amazingly quick and a noticeable improvement over older devices while the 30 watt warp charger that comes in the box is amazingly fast. Now we move on to the internals, and I don't know what to say about Oxygen OS that hasn't already been said. It's quick and snappy, doesn't carry any bloatware, and caters well to noobs as well as enthusiasts. OnePlus has a reputation for lasting speed and performance in their phones, and this one seems to maintain that. I can't say for certain how any phone will hold up over time, and though OnePlus phones are generally well respected in that regard, the website cites only two years of Android updates and three years of security updates. I think the value of this device would be greatly improved if OnePlus were able to offer updates for longer. The storage speed, wired transfer speed, and SoC are all places OnePlus has managed to cut costs, using UFS 2.1, USB 2.0, and a Snapdragon 765G respectively. Honestly, I couldn't tell during my review. The phone is no slouch, even when loading apps into memory. The Nord certainly doesn't slack in storage either, with options up to 256GB of storage and 12GB of RAM. There's no room for expandable storage, but that's not really an issue for me with this much built right in. In the review documentation, OnePlus said that this, being a European device, wouldn't have 4x4 MIMO in North America, despite actually having the hardware. Nevertheless, I popped my SIM in and ran with it. In data, calling, and texting, the phone held up as good or perhaps better than my 7T had in similar circumstances. 
Calls were clear, connections were decent, and in some cases I was actually able to get good signal where previously I couldn't. Overall, no issues. I'm not in a region with 5G support, so I wasn't able to test that. But know that this device supports low band 5G and not millimeter wave. The OnePlus Nord technically has four rear cameras, but it's really three. And when I say three, it's more two with an extra. I'll cover them in order of least to most important. First, we have a macro camera. Being able to take macro shots is cool, but this one falters for a few reasons. The lens is quite wide, the front aperture is tiny, and the sensor is only two megapixels. You won't be able to crop in and see details, which is unfortunate as the lens is so wide. However, uncropped, it should have enough resolution for most social media feeds. The lens here has an unusual bokeh that causes out-of-focus regions to distort around a center in something of an artistic fashion. This, alongside the limitations listed earlier, gives the macro camera a distinctive look. Ironically, it seems the main camera takes better macro photos overall, which we'll cover later. Sorry, macro camera. Now we get to the lenses that are actually useful. The ultra-wide lens is amazing for adding versatility to your camera setup. This one is quite simple. It's 8 megapixels and is full auto. It's not as good as the main camera, but it's still a good camera, and would be fine for social media. It has HDR and enough detail to let you crop in, even though you won't. Due to the nature of the ultra-wide camera, I do recommend being careful to make sure it has good enough lighting. But if you need it in a dimly lit scene, it does have night mode to help you out. It also supports video up to 4K and time-lapse, but unfortunately the stock camera app doesn't give it manual mode or portrait mode. Ultimately, the ultra-wide camera here is good, and I'm glad the Nord has it at this price point. Now onto the primary camera. It uses the Sony IMX586, a 48 megapixel sensor that's designed to be pixel binned down to 12 megapixels for larger effective pixels. OnePlus has been using this sensor in phones since 2019, and they still use it as the primary camera of the OnePlus 8, but with an updated f1.75 lens. The one in the Nord seems to have the same lens as the OnePlus 8. In a word, the primary camera experience is good. OnePlus has never been the company to go to if cameras are your top priority, but you won't be disappointed in this. The HDR is decent, and the colors and details are solid in good lighting. Let's go back to the topic of macro photos. Here, the larger 12 megapixel sensor and wider aperture mean that you can crop into 2x and take a photo from further away, but still come out with better colors, details, and even bokeh than a dedicated macro camera. Macro shots with this camera are beautiful. The HDR might not be as good as what companies like Google can offer, but it's still a staple of smartphone photography today, and great for improving camera versatility. Unfortunately, OnePlus doesn't put the HDR override controls up front in the camera app. Rather, it's at the top of the camera settings and you can only turn it to auto. I'd much rather they put an off auto on selection right beside the flash controls instead of the 48 megapixel selector. Speaking of 48 megapixels, it's an option, but I recommend sticking to 12 megapixels in general for smaller files. Color accuracy can take a hit in less than ideal lighting depending on what the scene is. In many instances it's fine, but things can sometimes come up with incorrect saturation or warmth, so keep an eye out for that. When the night comes, the Nord will do its best to keep up. It has no problem asking you to hold your phone steady as it tries to capture a good image with a longer shutter. As a result, dim photos usually turn out as bright or brighter than expected, but make sure you have a steady hand. Nightscape can help improve brightness dramatically, but the pros and cons are still the same, and I think it oversaturates the image a bit. It also comes with portrait mode, pro mode, video up to 1080p 60 or 4K 30, 30 frames per second time lapse at 1080p or 4K, 1080p slow mo, and a bunch of photo filters that you can apply before you take the photo, which should in theory be better than ones you apply after the fact. I would like if OnePlus gave you more control over these features, like adjusting the speed of slow-mo and time-lapse, but for a normal person doing normal things, these don't tend to make a huge difference. Overall, the main camera is good, and in the right conditions, it is downright impressive. OnePlus has no problem putting this on their more expensive OnePlus 8, and the inclusion of a decent ultra-wide camera gives it a key advantage over some of its budget competitors. You might notice I didn't cover the selfie cameras. While I do love taking photos on my phones, selfies just aren't my thing. The Nord has two front-facing cameras, a 32 megapixel main camera and an ultra-wide 8 megapixels. Like the rear main camera, the 32 megapixel selfie camera is supposed to pixel bin down to 8 megapixels, but mine forgot to do that. 
They're okay for social media use, the main is better than the ultra wide, and I do recommend using them in decent lighting. There's no surprises here, so let's move on to the device overview. The OnePlus Nord is pretty much everything you could ask for if you're an average consumer. Obviously, different people have different preferences, so while I recommend it generally, you need to think about your specific use case. Here's some of the pros. Firstly, the price is right. This is an amazingly valued device, and in key areas, it can compete with phones double the cost. It has a large, smooth, and beautiful flat display. Charging, unlocking, and general usage is quick and snappy. It's equipped with 5G for when that finally gets implemented, and its other wireless connections are all up to snuff. Oxygen OS appeals widely, and the inclusion of the notification slider is great. The camera is decent, and the ultra-wide lens is a good addition. If the cons of this device don't bother you, then a Nord is a phone that provides a cohesive 2020 experience without making you feel like you settled. So now we have to talk about the cons. If you're the sort of person who uses your phone late at night or in extremely bright conditions, the brightness range of the display could be less than ideal. If you like listening to music and watching videos on your phone without any sort of earphones, headphones, or speakers, then the mono down firing speaker could be disappointing. If you like wireless chargers or headphone jacks, then this doesn't have either. If you want the absolute best photo or video options, then this phone isn't that. I can't fault the Nord for going with a cheaper processor and lower storage and transfer speeds because not many phones are able to offer such a holistic 2020 experience at this price, but keep it in mind if you intend to keep the phone for a while. Also, if you have small hands, the overall large body might not be to your liking, and I'm going to have to put the plastic frame as a con even if the lighter weight makes it easier to hold. If you like the Nord but want a metal body, better display, dual speakers, and some other internal improvements, I think the OnePlus 7T or perhaps 7 Pro are also great picks with amazing value, but bear in mind they're from 2019 and don't have 5G. In conclusion, I recommend it. Like the iPhone SE or Pixel 4a, I feel one of the largest advantages to the Nord is that it's a OnePlus phone. That's not to say anyone should blindly follow a brand, but this device brings to the table many things people love about OnePlus phones, like Oxygen OS, the notification slider, the 90Hz display, and most importantly, the value. As a disclaimer, OnePlus did not pay me to write this review, neither were they able to see it ahead of time. My early access to the phone was through a 50 device North American beta program in which those who produce the most thoughtful and honest reviews are able to keep their devices. I'll leave a link in the description. I'm the Bowtie Guy, and thank you for sitting through this entire review of the OnePlus Nord. Mm -hmm.